there is a difference between this guy and this guy. But what you maybe not see is that there is a big similarity as well. Both of them have no clue what they want to do in life. But for one, it's a source of joy and happiness, whereas for the other, it's a source of quiet despair. But why is that the case? And more importantly, how do we use this youthful optimism to shape our next career? When you look closer, there is a major difference. When you were young, your parents encouraged you to do many things. Nothing was too far or too impossible. You were made to believe that for you, everything is possible. And so we come up with ideas. For most of us in our teenage years or early 20s, we start to experiment with different things. Maybe we study and finally start out in a career. And then something else happens. Maybe you become a junior doctor and people encourage you to climb that career ladder or like myself, you start in a finance career and then the holy grail becomes being a manager, a leader, somebody who goes places and makes an impact. Suddenly, strangely, the opportunities you are told are no longer endless. You are following a path. And your circle of friends and colleagues will likely be in the same field as you. And if you dare to bring up the subject of career change, they will have plenty of advice. And that will bring you right back into the same line of work. And that is why it is so common that you feel you want to change careers, but still have no clue what to do. journey to work, this is really the only time I can truly focus. I should do this more often. I do like places in the sun. When you really want to know what to do next, you have to blend out all these outer voices. You have to start listening to yourself, but it's so difficult because those other voices, they become so loud that we often can't hear ourselves anymore. But this voice inside you, that gives you a valuable indication of what you find meaningful, what makes you happy, what makes you joyful, but also the things that you want to change. So it is the best starting point to determine what we want to do next, but it also presents us with a huge problem. <laughs> Research shows us that we become a society that's increasingly unhappy. And so determining our next career around what makes us happy seems like a good idea, right? Except it isn't. At least not for the question that we try to answer, what we want to pursue. See, there are a lot of things that make me happy. Clicking the like button makes me happy. Feeding the ducks makes me happy. But being a professional duck feeder, that just sounds ridiculous because it completely lacks meaning for myself. And so the better question is, what do you find meaningful? By all means, start out with the things that make you happy, that you find joy in. But remember, no one of us is 100% happy all of the time. In fact, for most of us, happiness are tiny fractions of our life. Remember Will Smith? This part of my life, this little part, is called happiness. So after you have determined what makes you happy, what makes you joyful, also go one step further, ask what do you find meaningful? Is it helping other people? Is it making money? Is it being hurt? For me, it's helping those who are less conventionally minded to embrace their journey, despite all their friends telling them otherwise. I recently read the book Essentialism, and the author makes an interesting distinction between 
the essentialist and the non-essentialist. We would maybe assume that the essentialist does one thing and does it well, and that's true, sort of. But it's also true that the process of coming up with that one thing comes from the habit of considering many possibilities and then committing to a chosen few rather than trying everything. Society may look down on us when we start doing multiple things. We are called unfocused, not determined, not putting our full energy into one thing, so we start to feel uncertain. And I'll tell you what, you gotta live with that, because something far bigger is at stake here. You have to spend some time trying different things so that you can decide what is truly essential for you. Now you have found this one thing that you think that you decide is essential to you. What do you think happens next? People like Gary Vee and Elon Musk, they've already figured it out, but for many of us, we still subscribe to this idea of one career. But remember what we said about careers, that they have to be meaningful. The reality is that many tasks, in fact, many careers can bring the same meaning into our work. Say you fall into the camp of the person who wants to help other people, so you become a doctor or you become a life coach, or you write articles to help people knowing themselves a little bit better. And those are all very different careers, but they contribute to the same meaning. They bring the same things into your life. Sometimes we become so focused trying to figure out this one thing that we actually totally miss the actual objective here to bring meaning into our careers. So even when you have figured out this one thing, the essential thing that you put all your energy in, which you definitely should, remain open to the possibility that there will be tasks coming to you that you find meaningful as well, and being open to a portfolio of careers. And once you put all those things into practice, listening to yourself more intently, valuing meaning over happiness, experimenting with different things, being open to the possibility of a portfolio of careers, then you need courage, a lot of courage. So watch this next.